Okay, we're going to pick up where we left off with wonder. Extraordinary, but no one there to see is the title of our next chapter. And this is Miranda's point of view. Neither my mother nor my father could have seen, could come to see the play on opening night. My mother, because she had this thing at work, and my dad, because his new wife was going to have her baby any second now, and they had to be on call. Zach couldn't come to opening night either. He had a volleyball game against Collegiate. He couldn't miss. In fact, he wanted me to miss the opening night so I could come cheer him on. My friends all went to the game, of course, because all of their boyfriends were playing. Even Ella didn't come. Given a choice, she chose the crowd. So on opening night, no one was remotely close to me. No one that was remotely close to me was even there. And the thing is, I realized in my, in my third or fourth, fourth rehearsal that I was good at, act, at this acting thing. I felt the part. I understood the words I spoke. I could read the lines as if they were coming from my brain and my heart. And on opening night, I can honestly say I knew I was going to be more than good. I was going to be great. I was going to be extraordinary, but there would be no one there to see me. We were all backstage, nervously running around through our lines in our heads. I peeked through the curtain at the people taking their seats in the auditorium. That's when I saw Augie walking down the aisle with Isabel and Nate. They took three seats in the fifth row near the middle. Augie was wearing a bow tie. He, looked, he was looking around excitedly. He had grown up a little bit since I had seen him last, almost a year ago. His hair was shorter and he was wearing some kind of hearing aid now. His face hadn't changed a bit. Davenport was running through his, some last minute changes with the set decorator. I saw Justin pacing off the stage left, mumbling his lines nervously. Mr. Davenport, I said, surprised with myself as I spoke. I'm sorry, but I can't go on tonight. Davenport turned around slowly. What? He said. I'm sorry. Are you kidding? I'm just, I muttered, looking down. I don't feel well. I'm sorry. I feel like I'm going to throw up. This was a lie. It's just last minute jitters. No, I can't do it. I'm telling you. Davenport looked furious. Miranda, this is outrageous. I'm sorry. Davenport took a deep breath like he was trying to restrain himself. To be truthful, I thought he looked like he was going to explode. His forehead turned bright pink. Miranda, this is absolutely unacceptable. Now go take a few deep breaths and I'm not going on, I said loudly. And the tears came down my eyes fear, fairly easily. Fine, he said, not looking at me. Then he turned to a kid named David who was a set decorator. Go find Olivia in the lit lighting booth. Tell her she's filling in for Miranda tonight. What? said David, who wasn't too swift. Go! shouted Davenport. In his face, now! The other kids had caught on to what was happening and gathered around. What's going on? said Jason. Last minute change of plan, said Davenport. Miranda isn't feeling well. I feel sick, I said, trying to sound sick. So why are you still here? Davenport said to me angrily. Stop talking, take off your costume, and give it to Olivia, okay? Come on, everybody, let's go, go, go. I ran backstage in the dining to the dressing room as quickly as I could and started peeling off my costume. Two seconds later, there was a knock and Via had opened the door. What is going on, she said. Hurry up, put it on, I answered, handing her the dress. You're sick? Yes, hurry up. Via, looking stunned, took off her t-shirt and jeans, put on the long dress over her head, and I pulled it down for her and then zipped up the back. Luckily, Emily Webb didn't go on until 10 minutes into the play, so the girl handling hair and makeup had time to put Via's hair up at a twist and do a quick makeup job. I'd never seen Via with a lot of makeup on. She looked like a model. I'm not even sure I'll remember my lines, Via said, looking at herself in the mirror. Your lines? 
You'll do great, I said. She looked at me in the mirror. Why are you doing this, Miranda? Olivia? It was Davenport. Hush, shouting from the door. You're out in two minutes. It's now or never. Via followed him out the door. So I never got the chance to answer her question. I don't know why, what I would have said anyway. I wasn't sure what the answer was. The performance. I watched the rest of the play from the wings just off stage next to Davenport. Justin was amazing, and Via in that heartbreaking last scene was awesome. There was one line that she flubbed a bit, but Jason covered her for that, and no one in the audience even noticed. I heard Davenport muttering under his breath, good, good, good. He was more nervous than any of the students put together. The actors, the set directors, the lighting team, the guy handling the curtains. Davenport was a wreck, frankly. The only time I felt any regret, if you could even call it that, was at the end of the play when everyone out went out for their curtain calls. Via and Justin were the last of the two actors, the last of the actors to walking out on the stage, and the audience rose to their feet and they took their bows. That, I admit, was a little bittersweet for me. But just a few minutes later, I saw Nate and Isabel and Augie make their way backstage. And they all seemed so happy. Everyone was congratulating theater mayhem and sweaty actors stand euphoric while people came come worship them for a few seconds. In that crush of people, I noticed Augie looking kind of lost. I cut through the crowd as fast as I could and came up behind him. Hey, I said, Major Tom. After the show, I can't say why I was so happy to see August again for so long or how good it felt when he hugged me. I can't believe how big you've gotten, I said to him. I thought you were going to be in the play, he said. I wasn't up to it, I said, but Via did was great, don't you think? He nodded. Two seconds later, Isabel found us. Miranda, she said happily giving me a kiss on the cheek, and then to Augie, don't ever disappear like that again. You're the one who disappeared, Augie answered back. How do you feel, Isabel said to me. Via told us you got sick. Much better, I answered. Is your mom here, Asked, said Isabel. No, she had work stuff, and it's actually not a big deal for me, I said truthfully. We have two more shows anyway. Though I don't think I'd be as good as Emily it, and Emily as Via was tonight. Nate came over and we had basically the same exact conversation. Then Isabel said, look, we're going to have a late night supper to celebrate the show. Are you feeling up to joining us? We'd love to have you. Oh, no, I started to say. Please, said Augie. I should go home, I said. We insist, said Nate. By now, Via and Justin had come over with Justin's mom, and Via put her arm around me. You're definitely coming, she said, smiling, her old smile at me. They started leading out of the crowd, and I have to admit, that was the first time in a very, very long time that I felt absolutely happy. Now, we go back to um, August's point of view next, and so I'm going to stop this recording now. Um, actually, we're only eight minutes in. I think I can do a little bit more. It'll allow me to go up that high. August, um, part eight. You're, re you're going to reach the sky. Fly, beautiful child. Eurythmics, beautiful child. The fifth grade nature retreat. Every year in the spring, the fifth graders of Beecher Prep go away for three days and two nights to a place called the Boarwood Nature Reserve in Pennsylvania. It's a four-hour bus drive away. The kids sleep in cabins with bunk beds. There's campfires and s'mores and long walks through the woods. The teachers have been prepping us about this all year so that the kids in the grade are excited about it, except for me. And it's not even that I'm I'm not excited because I kind of am. It's just that I've never slept away from home before and I'm kind of nervous. Most kids have had sleepovers by this time and they're my, that are my age. A lot of kids have gone to sleepaway camps or stayed with their grandparents or whatever. 
Not me. Not unless you include hospital stays, but even then, mom or dad always stayed with me overnight. But I never slept at Tata or Papa's house, or Aunt Kay, or Uncle Poe's house. When I was really little, that was mainly because there were too many medical issues. Like my trach tube needed to be cleared out every hour, or reinserting my feeding tube if it got detached. But when I got bigger, I just never felt like sleeping anywhere else. There was one time when I half slept over Christopher's house. We were about eight, and to this, um, eight, and we were still best friends. Our family had gone for a visit to the house, and me and Christopher were having such a great time playing Lego Star Wars that I didn't want to leave when it was time to go. We were like, oh, please, please. Can we just have a sleepover? So our parents said yes, and Mom and Dad and Bea drove home. And me and Christopher stayed up till midnight playing, until Lisa, his mom, said, okay, guys, it's time to go to bed. Well, that's when I kind of panicked a little bit. I Lisa tried to help me go to sleep, but just I just started crying, and I wanted to go home. So at 1 a.m., Lisa called Mom and Dad, and Dad drove all the way all the way back to Bridgeport to pick me up. We didn't get home until 3 a.m. So one, my one and only sleepover uh, up until now was pretty much a disaster, which is why I'm a little nervous about the nature retreat. On the other hand, I'm really excited. So I'm gonna stop there and um, not a whole lot more to go in the book.